welcome back to my channel my name is uka if you're new if you're a returning subscriber hi how are you what's going on in today's video we are going to be talking about financial accounts that you need as an adult to be able to sustain this adulthood right this adulthood i have realized that is the worst hood that i've ever been in and i just want to go back to childhood at this point but i can't some things you just cannot do right and you can only control what you can control so today in this video i'm going to be helping you guys control what you can actually control right <laughs> okay so uh we're talking about i'm gonna say four or five different accounts you should financial accounts you should have as an adult when i say as an adult i, I would think from 24 and up right or even 23 as long as you have your first big girl big boy job the faster you start this account the better for you the first account we're going to be talking about is savings account. There are different savings account. There is high yield savings, savings account and there's just reg other regular savings account that doesn't really do much. With high yield savings account, you can get like interest on your the money you already have. So basically you could have, let's say you have 5% interest. Let's say you have $100,000 in your savings account, right? So every year you are gaining at least 5% of that. What is 5% of? hundred thousand dollars i'll say five thousand dollars correct me if i'm wrong i don't do math okay i don't have my calculator right now but you'll be getting that much every single year and this is usually paid on a monthly basis so imagine putting money in your account and you'll be getting that much amount by doing absolutely nothing the other regular accounts don't really give you much it just gives you like i don't know some have like two percent some has like sometimes you just get one cent in your account let's just put it the way it is right every account is square differently but in my opinion i'll say to, i'll suggest to have different savings accounts you can have you can use your high yield savings account as your long-term savings account long-term savings accounts can be for like buying a house it can be for buying a car it can be for getting married all those things are long-term goals that your long-term savings accounts can fulfill so that way that oh i'm saving for this and i'm saving this much for this and let's say like two three four years five years down the line you accumulate so much money that you know it will match up with the inflation or maybe not because the inflation and what's going on right now is unpredictable so don't quote me on that all right so the other uh, service account that you can have is your short-term service account that could be like for your travel funds or oh, i want to take a vacation for my birthday how much do i need and by, by when let's say i need to take a vacation in four months i'm gonna start now to save money every every two weeks to to be able to accomplish that savings and then to 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 travel and most of the time if you're somebody that travels a lot that should be a staple account that you have to put money away every time so that you know when, whenever it's time for you to travel you have money already set aside and there is also emergency fund savings accounts emergency fund savings account with emergency fund usually for me i have six months worth of all my all my my bills we're talking about rent we're talking about health insurance we're talking about bill uh, light bill whatever six months worth of payment in that account and i usually suggest to use i would suggest to put this in your high yield savings account as well because it's, it's kind of a, a short it's kind of a long-term savings account because crazy things don't happen that often maybe it does i don't know just do whatever you need to do but make sure you have a high yield savings account that's all i'm trying to tell you <laughs> The second account that you need to have as an adult is a 401k or an IRA or both. Let me break that down. If you work in corporate America, of course, and your company provides you 401k, I'll say to take advantage of that. With 401k is pre-tax money sometimes. Sometimes it's money that you already pay taxes on, which is called Roth, Roth 401k as well. So with this, your company would contribute some amount, some percentage, and then you yourself will contribute some percentage. But usually, for example, let's say company A, they have a 401k and their employees, which is you, if you contribute 5% of your paycheck, then they're going to contribute 5%. So they're going to match it equally. So in this situation, you have to put in 5% of your paycheck. Let's say you get paid $100,000 a year. If you get paid $100,000 a year, make sure that every paycheck you are putting the exact amount that will make you know five thousand dollars because five percent of hundred thousand is five thousand dollars right and then that means your company will add additional five thousand dollars in your account at the end of the year you have ten thousand dollars 
five thousand dollars you did absolutely nothing for all you did was you contributed and your company said oh okay let's just match you so in this situation i'll say to contribute the exact match that they are gonna give they are gonna be giving you so that you can take full advantage of that 401k and within this 401k they are going to be investments make sure you don't just leave, leave them sitting wherever default that your company have it set on go in there and change it and usually i'll put it on target their funds target the funds usually is it targets the day that you're going to retire now let's say if you are meant to retire in like 2070 right you are going to put it in the target day fund 2020 2070 so that way it will be more aggressive than somebody that will, that will retire in 2035 you put money in there and then you go, you also have to invest the money that you're putting in there there is different kind of investment option in there and then all you have to do is diversify your investments like i said you can still do target day funds you can do s p 500 all these different kinds of investment the ones that yield money there's a way to go in there and look at how has how has this investment performed in the last five years in the last two years and then and then you set it up that way if you're not familiar with this i'll say to go on youtube and look this up because i know i have a lot of information on this because i've worked i've worked as a retirement person before i've worked in a retirement place so i was able to work with different accounts like retirement accounts roth iras and other different accounts so I, that's how i have all this knowledge and then you can also have both right if you have 401k you can also still have a roth ira and it basically kind of work the same and with this account you guys should know that with iras you can only take it out when you're 59 and a half otherwise there might be a penalty usually the penalty is 10 usually the penalty is 10 percent of whatever amount you, you took out but there could be if you have a good reason of taking that out let's say you're buying a house uh, or if you're having a hardship there there could be a way that you know that 10 percent can come back to you so this account is an account you're just saving money for when you're older so just have that in mind and the third account that you need to have as an adult i would say H hsa uh health savings account health savings account is actually very very important with health savings account you get to contribute into this account through your employer as well so with this you contribute uh pre-tax money money that you haven't paid taxes on you contribute it and with this money they give you a card and you use this to pay your medical bills you use it to pay for your copay you can use it to buy medication all these kind of things so you're taking advantage of tax so that that basically means that you're not paying taxes on this you are just using it to pay for your medical bills but the only thing is you can only use this to pay for your medical bills and only your medical bills anything related to your medication anything related to your doctor's visit you can use it but other than that you cannot use it for anything else but it gives you a tax, tax break that's why i like this and also this account you can accumulate so much money so that when you're older and you know that's when people start having a lot of issues the health issues when you're older you won't drown in bills you have money set up to be able to pay all these pesky little bills that will come up the last account that i'm going to be talking about today is investment account i know i spoke about iras 401k and i told you you can invest yes you can but like still with an investment account usually a brokerage account this account you can get from a lot of different banks you have charles schwab you have fidelity you have even wells Fargo. don't do that but like there is a lot of different places that you can invest they have a lot of different options online once you go and look it up you'll be able to find this account it's a you'll be able to once you go online and look look up brokerage account this will be the account in this account you can be able to invest in a lot of different things you can invest in apple you can invest in s p 500 you can invest in efts a lot of different things that you can invest in you can set this up in a way that every month or every two weeks you can money can automatically go into that account and automatically invest into that account and that way you have your money accumulate the last account and this is a bonus one that i'm going to be talking about is a credit card account i think that is very important to have a credit card account because with this it helps you establish credit 
if you don't already have a credit is one of the best things to help you establish your credit by paying these things off on time making sure that you, you pay your your monthly payments or you pay your accumulated payments at the end of every month when you have a good credit and lenders know that you are able to pay for the money they are, that they are lending you so it's like a proof of concept it's a proof that you can actually be able to pay for your car when you buy when you get an auto loan or when you get a mortgage the companies they will look at it and they'll be like okay this person can pay their mortgage because i can tell that every month they are paying off their credit card um, and also just pay it off every month so to avoid the high interest you know payments that you have to pay because credit card has a really really high interest and you don't really want to get yourself into something that you cannot get yourself out so make sure you're using um, as minimum as you can maintain if this kind of video helped you uh, give it a thumbs up share with your friends tell me the kind of video you want to see in my next video but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe make sure you like the video and i'll see you guys on the next one bye